So this is my first attempt at discussing a book I've read recently, so please bear with me as this is kind of very much a test or a trial video for this kind of thing. Um, I decided to read this book after seeing Erin Pitsy interviewed by a number of different YouTubers. I've seen a few of her talks and I love that she's willing to fight the good fight even in the face of continued slander and opposition uh, from those who are generally less than good people. Uh, this, so basically, uh, this won't be quite a review, but more of an overview, discussion, and summary of the book, so that's my plan. This was originally published in 1974, Aaron Pitsy's book, Scream Quietly or the Neighbours Will Hear. It details the story of the creation of the first battered wives shelter in Cheswick, London, and the events that followed. Interspersed with real letters sent to the shelter from women all over the UK and internationally, as well as anecdotal stories regarding the women, men, children, organisations and law enforcers who came into contact with it, the book is not only a record of the trials faced by Pitsy and her accomplices in regards to keeping the shelter up and running, but it's also filled with theories and information regarding the nature of violence and how it should potentially be examined. So I actually found this book quite hard to read for long lengths of time. It's not difficult in the way it's written, but it's more to do with the content of what's actually in it. Um, it's not the sort of book I couldn't just not put down, you know. Uh, I went through chapter by chapter and I would usually take a couple of days break in between each chapter. It's not particularly graphic, but it is quite a grim, a harrowing read overall, and I think that you have to be in the right mood to tackle it. I actually found the way it's written to be rather engaging. Of course, as this is quite an old book, some of the facts and references are a little dated. There is, however, quite a lot that is still relevant today, making the book worthwhile. Parts of it are actually quite shocking. The notion, for example, that in order for a council to help a woman suffering abuse, she must have nowhere to go, but by being married, she was seen as having accommodation, so marriage, the social safety net at the time, could instead be detrimental to an individual receiving aid. And contrastingly, because the wife couldn't or wouldn't leave, the societal view was that she must enjoy the violence that is directed at her. Early on in the book, Pitsy is clear to establish that violence knows no boundaries in terms of class or race. Middle class women are just as likely as the working and underclasses to be the victims of violence. A woman who has children may be more willing to leave the situation, though a woman without children may endure longer. Violence is not only generational, but cyclical. A child who witnesses their parents battering each other, or who is the victim of violence, will likely grow up to do the same themselves. A mother who endures violence may be violent towards her children, out of resentment or exasperation. Boys and girls can be impacted equally. No one is exempt. On the subject of children, the next focus of discussion is the importance of men in the lives of children, and the need for kids to understand that men are capable of being more than just violent. As violence is passed from generation to generation, children as young as three can be seen to have violent tendencies in their behaviour. Pitsy noted how essential it was that children learned how men were not all violent and highlighted the need for integration for men and women to work together in these shelters. This is the main message that I took away from this book, that patterns of violence are a learned cyclical behaviour, passed down and mimicked from generation to generation, spouse to spouse, and so on. A person who grows up in a violent household is much more likely to be violent themselves. There is a trail that can be followed. Unless all violent parties get help, the pattern will continue. Prison doesn't solve the problem, but it is better putting one violent person in prison than subjecting a family to a new line of violence. It has been a little over 40 years since this book was published, and it's really sad to see that while some significant changes in areas have taken place, in others the same can't be said. For example, the goal of creating integrated shelters has not really come to pass, and I would argue that the gender divide has gotten significantly worse. Meanwhile, the bias of child custody in court cases has been reversed from the father to the mother winning the case the majority of the time. If you have any interest in gender issues, discussions of partner violence, or simply a little bit of history, I would recommend giving this book a go. In my mind, Erin Pitsy doesn't and hasn't received enough credit for the work she has done. Unfortunately, I have witnessed quite the opposite online. At times she has received slander and direct opposition. If you haven't read any of her books, I think this is a great place to start.